Aborian Finance is a new DeFi application on Abstract. Just one week after launching, it's already processed over 100 million in volume, generated and distributed to users over 115,000 in fees, and currently has some pretty insane APRs of upwards of 1500%. But for new users, it can be a little intimidating. So this video is dedicated to breaking it down from fundamental concepts like swapping and liquidity to the more advanced strategies that people can deploy to participate and earn rewards from the Aborian Finance Protocol. By the end of the video, you'll understand all of the different ways you can interact with Aborian to maximize its full potential, especially during the first couple of months where the incentives are juiced with the ABX emissions, which we'll get to later in the video. So without further ado, let's start with what Aborian is and why it exists inside of the abstract DeFi ecosystem. If you've ever bought or sold a coin before, you've likely used a liquidity pool to facilitate a swap. Now, this is probably already obvious to you since most likely if you're watching this video, you've already performed swaps in the past. But it is essential to understand how the Alborian protocol generates fees and interacts with those fees in various different ways. The TLDR here is if you try and buy or sell a coin like I am in the background here. So if I try and buy some Bitcoin with what little ETH I have in this wallet, Liquidity pools and swaps enable me to do this without having a matching sell order to this buy on the opposite side of the equation. Instead of me buying and someone else selling the Bitcoin that I'm trying to get, I'm tapping into an existing liquidity pool here where there is both ETH and Bitcoin deposited into that liquidity pool. And I'm depositing this amount of ETH into that pool and taking this amount of Bitcoin out of that pool. To really break this down into fundamentals, people have deposited both Bitcoin and ETH into this liquidity pool here. If I want to buy some Bitcoin, I deposit my ETH into that liquidity pool and get some Bitcoin out of that liquidity pool. And obviously throughout that process, the balances of these coins inside the liquidity pool changes as I withdraw and extract the coins that I'm buying or selling. During that process, there is a fee that takes place in order to facilitate that swap. If you swap enough or the liquidity pool is low on liquidity, this will also have a price impact that we'll talk about later. So in our diagram, I've sold my ETH to get Bitcoin out of that liquidity pool. And throughout that process, a swap fee has been charged to facilitate that trade. This swap fee partially will get distributed to the people who are called liquidity providers. These are, as the name suggests, people that deposited the Bitcoin and the ETH into this particular liquidity pool, as they're the ones putting up the capital that allow you to actually swap between these two coins. So this brings us to the first two sections inside the Aborian Finance application, which are the trade tab, as well as the liquidity tab. So in the top left here, you can see I have trade, which as we just showcased inside of the abstract portal, we can swap between two different tokens. So you can see all of my balances in this particular wallet here. For example, we can swap between Bitcoin and ETH once again. So if I wanna sell 13 Bitcoin, review that, I will get this amount of ETH in return. A fee is being charged and distributed to the liquidity providers as we just showed in this diagram here. This taps into the liquidity tab. So if we swap from trade to liquidity here, so as you can see, if we filter down to Bitcoin, we can actually see multiple liquidity pools that facilitate swaps between Ethereum or wrapped ETH and Bitcoin here, among other different pools between different coins like Abster and Redspa, uh, ABX to Bitcoin and from Bitcoin as well. So when we perform that trade from Bitcoin to ETH or vice versa, it's tapping into the liquidity inside of these liquidity pools. So you can see the top one here has 70 wrapped Ether and 462,000 Bitcoin to match that amount of Ether. The numbers that you're seeing here is the volume that has gone through this liquidity pool, the number of trades that has actually uh, been facilitated through this LP, and the amount of fees that have been taken to facilitate those swaps. We'll get into what this APR means shortly. If we scroll up a little bit, you can actually see that I've deposited some 
amount of liquidity into one of those pools. So I've actually deposited um, 0 0.023 ETH and around 150 Bitcoin, which gives me a grand total of 0.03% of that liquidity pool. Swaps and liquidity are going to be obvious to most of you watching this video. What we're gonna discuss next is in specifically to the Arborian protocol, how are people incentivized to deposit liquidity, at which point we'll introduce the ABX token and its role in the Arborian finance protocol. So if we revisit our diagram, we already kind of touched on it, but what is the reason that liquidity providers deposit their money into a liquidity pool? And we kind of already saw it on the UI with the APR and that big green number, but let's actually expand into that. So if we go back to the liquidity tab on Aborian here, and we scroll down these pools and we actually order by this APR number here, you can see some actually quite high APR numbers for some of the uh, less popular pools, let's say, for example, Poly, Newt, Google, some of the meme coins on Abstract. If we instead choose to filter by kind of popularity in terms of volume here, you can see the pools like uh, wrapped ETH to USDC, still very high uh, for traditional DeFi standards with 500% APR. If you don't already know what this APR means, it's essentially the expected yield that you're going to get if you deposit liquidity into these liquidity pools here. Obviously, it's fluctuating and will fluctuate over time. It's not going to remain at 500% uh, across its entire year. It's most likely going to go down significantly over the course of the week, month, year. It's not going to remain at this high of a level. But at this current moment in time, if you deposit into this liquidity pool, you can be expected to get a 500% APR if it remained the same incentive level over time, which it's not going to. It's going to decrease to a more reasonable APR, but it is kind of juiced in this first phase, which we'll touch on later in the video. Basically what this means is if I'm a liquidity provider and I have $100, I'm going to deposit into this liquidity pool and over the course of the year with this expected APR of 500%, let's round it down, I can expect that I'm going to get a 500% return on that initial $100 deposited over a year. Now, there are several caveats to this statement, which means you will not get 500% returns on top of your additional $100 deposit. The caveats to this is where we'll introduce the ABX tokens, but the other caveats to this are things like impermanent loss, where you might've been better off holding those coins instead of supplying them into liquidity pools, because the price of crypto is obviously volatile and changes over time. So you might have had better or worse returns than the result that you got from actually depositing that liquidity. The obvious other caveat, as I already mentioned, is the APR is not stable. It's most likely going to go down significantly over the course of a year and continue to fluctuate uh, up and down over the course of its lifetime. The third caveat that I want to mention is the returns are actually paid out in the Arborian Finance token called ABX. So jumping back into the app here, let's take a look at the liquidity that I've provided to this Bitcoin ETH pool here. As we saw before, I deposited the equivalent ETH to around 150 Bitcoin into this pool and staked that position. I only opened this position, I believe yesterday, and you can see I have 31 point something something ABX tokens that are claimable as a reward for me. The current price of ABX is around 10 cents at the time of recording this. So if we just divide this by 10, it's around $3.10 rewards in the form of ABX token that I can claim as a reward for depositing my liquidity into this pool. So if we revisit and transform our previous diagram a little bit, this is kind of the oversimplified version of what we've just described. As the perspective of a liquidity provider, I've put money up front into this liquidity pool, which I'm expecting gets this around 500% APR, at least for now. As we mentioned, this is dependent on the ABX price as well as the fluctuations in this APR. So let's turn one of these liquidity providers to be green to represent me here. The swap fees 
that the liquidity pools generate are basically being distributed in the form of this ABX token to me as well as all the other liquidity providers inside of that pool, which we already mentioned. The amount that you receive is actually also dependent on a couple of other factors, including the amount or the position size that you have in that liquidity pool, as well as the length of time that you've staked that position, which you can do, as you can see, I have staked my entire amount here in the Arborian dashboard. So that covers the fundamental essentials of Arborian and I guess DeFi in general. Now we're going to go into the more complex specifics of Arborian, like the lock tab, the vote tab, and finally the incentives tab. These three tabs actually interact very closely with one another. For example, you will lock your ABX tokens in order to vote. And what you vote on is kind of dependent on what incentives there are available for voting on specific pools. So if that made no sense, let's go ahead and dive into the three remaining sections here. Jumping into the lock tab on a Borean here, you can see I have created a lock. And what I've done is essentially I have locked a certain amount of ABX. So I've actually already locked most of mine into VABX and you can choose to determine how long you want to lock those tokens for. By locking, you're actually essentially staking your tokens into the form of an NFT called a VE NFT, which stands for voting escrow NFT. You can basically just summarize this as you're locking up your ABX tokens that you won't be able to trade them for a certain period of time. And in return, you'll get this NFT to represent that lock. So why would you want to lock your ABX tokens? Wouldn't you rather just sell them for the equivalent version of Ethereum or any other token that you could exchange it for? Here is where I think a boring gets really interesting is that you can actually vote on where the ABX tokens will be distributed to, to those liquidity providers. So if we go over to the vote tab, you can see we have tons of pools that we can use our VABX, which is what we exchanged our ABX tokens for in this locking process. So for example, if we look at one of my previous locks here, I locked 150 ABX tokens for one year. And in exchange, I got around 38 VE ABX. I can take that VE ABX and go over to the vote tab and vote on what pools I think the ABX tokens should be distributed to. And those ABX tokens will be given to the liquidity providers of the pools that the most people voted for in this page here. So let's actually do a live demo here. We'll create a new lock of three ABX and let's say, let's just lock it up for four years. So we get the most amount of VABX, create lock. You can see we successfully locked three ABX tokens and now we can actually see I have multiple locks in our lock section here. Interestingly, if we actually go to view our NFTs, you can see among other things here, we have um, our V NFTs representing our locked tokens. And within the traits, you can see the amount of locked ABX and the voting power that was granted to us. So that was my initial one. And the one that we just created was the locked ABX of three and the voting power of two. So once I've locked, I actually now have the power to kind of participate in the governance process of a Borean here. Essentially what we can do with these locked NFTs is we can tell the app what pools we think should get those distributions of ABX tokens. And those X tokens will then subsequently be distributed to the liquidity providers of those pools, which is kind of what we've already discussed in the first sections of this video. So down the bottom of the page here, you can see I've already used my first lock. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the lock that we just created and select what pool we want to incentivize. So for example, let's say I really like Pengu and I want people to deposit liquidity into this particular Pengu pool here. I can use my vote to say, I think you should give more ABX tokens to the liquidity providers of this particular pool here. 
because I like Pengu, I want the swaps to have low slippage. So what I can do is I can select, hey, I wanna use my NFT to vote for this particular pool in this particular voting round. So voting rounds reset uh, in epochs. I believe those epochs are around one week long. So I can go ahead and vote. As you can see, I will use 100% of this NFT's voting power in this particular epoch to vote for this pool. So all I'm doing here is saying, I want the Arborian Foundation basically to distribute the ABX tokens to this pool and reward the people who are providing liquidity for that pool. As I said, these synergize really closely, the lock vote and we'll get into incentives next. It's actually pretty simple, the incentives here. People like, for example, the Pengu team or the Absta team, for example, they see the value in people providing liquidity to their tokens pools. So partners or just individuals or anyone can actually provide this incentives column here. So you can see if we sort by incentives, some people have deposited various different tokens that you can be rewarded for, for voting for specific pools. So if we go over to the incentives tab of Arborian here, let's say I wanted people to vote for a big going to ETH pool to stick with the theme of this video. For example, the one we've been looking at is this pool here. I can try to kind of bribe or incentivize voters to vote their VABX tokens to this pool by incentivizing this pool by depositing uh, any kind of token here. So you can see I can deposit Absta, Arborian, Bitcoin, ETH, whatever you want. And these get distributed to people who vote for your pool. So it's a little bit of a flywheel here where people can incentivize voters and voters are more likely to chase the highest rewards that they're going to get. So they'll vote for the pools that are incentivized. And then the people who are looking to provide liquidity will then try to deposit funds into the liquidity pools with the highest APR, which is the pools that have received the most votes from the voters. So it's kind of like a little bit of a flywheel where we're incentivizing the pool and then subsequently people are incentivized to provide liquidity to the pools that have been incentivized with different tokens here. So for example, just to show you this flow, I can deposit some Bitcoin into this pool here to try and incentivize people to vote for this particular pool and receive some of this Bitcoin that I'm depositing to this incentive. Now, I quickly wanted to touch a little bit more on the ABX token and the emissions because right now, I think is very good time to actually participate in this protocol because the APR of these liquidity pools and the rewards that you get for participating are kind of juiced to grow in this first initial phase. What I mean by that is if we take a look at the Arborian documentation, we can see there is a whole section on emissions. And this is what we've already covered in terms of new ABX tokens are emitted and distributed to those who are providing liquidity, which we've already discussed. The thing is, this is a multi-phased approach where the first phase, weeks one to 14, so at the time of recording, we're in week two, so we still have a couple of months left of this growth phase, where the emission rate of ABX is growing 3% per week. Now, you can see here, the purpose is to bootstrap the initial liquidity and adoption. So this, the goal of this first phase is to really get people into Arborian and start providing liquidity into this protocol. The subsequent two phases is that the growth will slowly start getting less and less. And then finally, once it reaches a certain point, growth will pretty much be stable at a much lower amount from here on out. So the strategy for the first few months of Aborian, which we've just started, does seem to be focused on growth and bringing in that initial wave of liquidity to power the protocol. So for me, at least, obviously make your own decisions and your own strategies. It does seem like it is a good time to get started and participating into the protocol, depositing liquidity, voting, whatever strategy you want to implement. Hopefully this video has clarified what the different aspects of the application are and the different ways you can utilize it to achieve your goals. So thank you for watching. If this video gave you any value, I would greatly appreciate if you like, follow, subscribe, wherever you're watching, and I'll see you in the next one.